Howdy YouTube, this is Rock, and on this edition of Heroes of the Storm, we're going to be doing an ability overview and talent build of our newest hero to enter the Nexus, Gul'dan. Peace. Alright, so in this uh, video we're going to be doing an ability overview and talent build for Gul'dan. So there's not going to be any gameplay in this video. If you want to see gameplay for him, I'll leave a, a link to it in the video so you can jump right to the other video I'm going to put up of him uh, with the gameplay. So this is just going to be a long drawn out video of just going over his abilities and talents and uh, seeing what I think of him and what kind of, and going over the build that I'm going to try out. Um, so, uh, the, he is an interesting, uh, uh, he's actually the first warlock to be put into Heroes of the Storm, uh, which a lot of people have been calling for. A lot of people are really excited to see him, so am I. Um, so he has an interesting uh, mechanics to him to begin with. He does not passively regenerate mana. You actually have to use his trade ability here, which is called Life Tap. So any of you that are familiar with Warlock from World of Warcraft, you will know the ability of Life Tap. You get back mana um, for sacrificing your health. So that's how he gets back mana. He does passively regenerate health slowly, just like any other healer, but, there's, but he doesn't regenerate mana. The only way to get mana back is by using Life Tap. So you really have to um, manage his mana compared to his health. Uh, because there are ways to gain back your health, but that's the only way to gain back your mana. So you have to really watch. If you want to be able to do your abilities, you have to watch your health level. Keep that nice and high uh, to be able to keep your mana nice and high. Alright, so we're going to go over his abilities here. His Q ability is called Fell Flame. Um, and it has a 1.5 second cooldown, so you can be spamming this a lot. It just shoots out this nice green flame here, and as you see, you can just be pounding this out every one and a half seconds. And you can just be doing a lot of damage, but it also sucks up your mana pretty well. You can see my blue bars down, and I am not regenerating any mana at all. But, I've used our life tap ability, and you get a whole bunch of mana back, See, I got an entire bar of mana back for a little more, or a little less than half my health. So that's how you regenerate that. Now your W ability is called Drain Life. This is one of the ways that you can get your life back. You drain the life from an enemy for, uh, for 3 seconds, dealing 290 damage per second, and healing 377 per second. So we're going to... Use this on Arthas here, drain him, and you can see I'm draining his life and getting my life back. I can use Life Tap again, get some mana back, shoot out my abilities. But this is what I mean about that you have to kind of manage your health compared to your mana. You don't want to be totally draining your health to ha leave you with no health because it is a 10 second cooldown on your life drain. So you want to be using life drain as often as you can to tap off your health so that you can use your life tap to get your mana back. Because without mana, obviously, you're not going to be able to do anything. So, and obviously, you know, you can be grabbing globes to get your health back also, which does regenerate a little bit of your, your mana. And also, you know, sippy cups will also do the same thing. But in the field, if you manage this right, there's really no reason to be going back. You know, you can do this... You can even life tap on minions, get their health, re replenish yours. So there's no reason to actually go back um, unless you know your drain life is on cooldown or something and you're almost dead or something like that, then you might want to go back. But if you manage it correctly and you, and you play in the backfield and you don't get in a lot of damage, you can actually be out in the field the entire fight and never actually have to go back. So his E ability is um, when, 
a very interesting ability. I like it a lot. It's called Corruption. So you cast forth three blasts of shadow energy, dealing 491 damage over six seconds. So it's kind of like a, a, a poison or something like that. But it goes out in these three jots. See, these three circles is where you're actually going to do it. So you can pick the range and stuff like that. But for every circle the enemy, the hero steps in, they're going to be getting, you could see that poison on them, a damage over time effect. So if you're lucky and they're running away from you like that, I'm going to reset, I'm going to keep toggle cooldowns off so that I can actually keep using it, showing you the ability. If you, if they're running away from you, they could actually get within all three circles and just be taking so much damage. So let's see if we can get Arthas to run away from us and see if we can get it in there. Oh, and he turned. But if he would have, if he would have walked through all three of those circles, he would have been getting that three times the amount of damage over time effect on him. All right. So that's his corruption ability and his talent, like his, his trade ability, is life tap. So we can get our mana back. Um, now we're going to go over um, his uh, traits here, his talents. So at level 1, um, our options here, we do have three quest options. We have the Pursuit of Flame, which uh, hits 40. Um, the quest is hit 40 enemy heroes with Fell Flame, uh, which then will increase your radius by 10%. Now I was looking at that, and this is your radius here, so that just means that you're just going to be a wider cone. And honestly, that cone is not that big to begin with. I mean, it's not like a huge cone or anything. I wasn't overly impressed with the idea of only having 10% more. So I really didn't want to go with uh, Pursuit of Flame there. Then we have Glyph of Drain Life. Increases the cost range of our cast range of drain life. So that means you can see this is the cast range. So it just means that you're going to be able to be back further in the back line um, with that to be able, so you won't have to be able to be so close to be able to do it by 25% more. So that's actually a significant amount um, to be able to cast it. I mean, I could probably be standing here you know, back here and still hit Arthas with it, you know, pretty close if I took that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to take it. Oops. Increase the range. Yeah, it's a pretty significant increase there. But, um, I'm not going to go with that one. I like, um, I like one of the other abilities better. Um, that is very useful. The next ability is called Echoed Corruption. Now, I liked this one a lot. Um, what it does is hit 30 enemy heroes with corruption. Um, that's the quest. And then that, uh, the reward for it is after the third strike, corruption strikes three times in the opposite direction. So you see these arrows, or you see these circles, they're going to go out. And then once you actually complete the quest, which I'm going to be able to hopefully show you in here, um, you, it's going to go out and then come back. So technically, if somebody is dumb enough to walk through all six of them, you're just going to be doing tons and tons of damage. And then the last one is called uh, Chaotic Energy. Gathering regen globes causes your next basic ability with mana cost to refund 25 mana. Um, I didn't really see a reason to do that. I mean, you still have plenty of ways. You have your life tap replenishes plenty of damage. Um, I suppose if you really wanted uh, to not have to worry about your mana as much as you do, um, that you can just, you can take that one and you'll be able to get so much more mana back. Um, so the reward on that is after gathering 20 regeneration globes, your basic ability mana costs are permanently reduced by 20. Uh, so that means, obviously, you take that and you're just, you're not going to be able to not need to use life tap as much to regenerate your mana because the mana cost is going to be nothing. 
you know, it's 75 mana, 90 mana, you're just going to have to, you're not going to be able to, not have to regenerate your mana as often with that, because you're just not going to use it as much. You know, as much mana overall. But I liked Echoed Corruption. I liked uh, having that uh, return ability on there, and just having the ability to stack that damage so much. So we're going to take that, and hopefully I'm going to be able to um, show you that pretty well. And you can see that every time somebody steps in that circle, it ticks off. So I hit Arthas twice with that because of how he walked through it. So because of that, that also means that you're going to be building that quest a lot quicker. Uh, because you're going to be doing... Look. See, I think I got two more. Yep, I got two more on that. So your quest on that... It's just going to be so much quicker to build on that. So that means you're going to be able to take advantage of that if you're good enough to get them in there. Because those don't count. Um, get the heroes in there. You're going to build the quest so much quicker. Alright, so at level 4 your options are Health Funnel. If an enemy dies while under the effects of Drain Life, the cooldown is reduced by 6 seconds. And the cooldown is 10 seconds. So if you kill somebody with it... Um, the cooldown is reduced to almost nothing. So, which is nice, um, because then you're just going to be able to do it again. But, so far, from what I've been playing with them, I haven't had a whole lot of reason to take that one. I, I find that there's a better, um, option in this tier. So, your second one is, uh, Improved Life Tap. Life tab now restores 35 mana instead of 25% mana. Um, I did really like that. I like that option. Uh, it just means that you're going to be getting your mana back so much quicker. Um, or so much more of a return uh, with that one than you did uh, than you did before. So, you know, you life tap it up. But I do get a good amount of uh, mana back from it. And then the last one that I liked, actually, um, I played around with this one for a little while, is Consume Soul. Instantly kill an enemy minion and heal for 832 um, health. So let's uh, let's use up some of our mana here. Get a little bit of on our quest here. And then we'll use our trait. We'll get back, you know, lose some health here with it. And then once the minion comes up, I gotta actually select it, duh. And then um, let's use our life tap again so that we can see how much we're gonna get from that. So we use that, we get a big jump back from it. There was a big increase on it. Um, so I liked that. And then if you really need it, you know, we're gonna, if you, let's waste some more mana here. Use our life tap. So we use up some of our health. Use up some more. And life tap, and then just see what kind of a jump. See, then we can do this, kill them, and then if we still need more, we can life tap and just come right back up. I liked that combo. And it resets every 30 seconds, so it's not like it's a long wait to be able to redo it. So if you're really low on health because you've really let yourself go on mana, and you really and you just have to replenish yourself, if you just come up to a minion, use it. Oh, I still need some more. Life tap a minion. Boom, you're up to health again. I like that combo. Although, the improved life tap, getting back all that extra mana, is definitely a good option. Um, but I just loved how quickly you can heal yourself back up just on a couple minions. Um, and, and just be up there so much quicker. I just liked um, how fast you could heal yourself after using life tap with that. So we're going to go with Consume Soul. And how are we doing? We're up to 12, so we're almost halfway there. I'd like to, I want to, I want to actually show you how that looks. So we're going to use it again. Um, life tap. And then once a minion comes around again, we'll suck up a minion and heal back up. So level seven, um, the first ability we have is 
Bound by Shadows. Each enemy hero hit with Fell Flame, this one right there, reduces your cooldown of Corruption by one second. I like this one. Um, I'm going to be trying out uh, Bell by, um, Bound by Shadows um, because that means that upon this quest... Ooh, nice one. I got him three times. Nice. Um, with the quest to uh, to uh, have to get to 30, you know, obviously you have to wait the, the 16 seconds uh, for your cooldown to come up again before you can use it again. Um... So, with this, with being able to shoot these flames out every one and a half seconds, that means you, within a period of 16 seconds, you're going to be able to drop the cooldown probably by a good four to five seconds off the cooldown, which is definitely nice. So, let's, uh, then the, I'll take it in a second. The second one is called Devour the Foul, the Frail, sorry, Devour the Frail. Drain life deals 50% more damage to enemies below 50 health. That's a very situational. I'm not much of a person that likes situational things. Um, I like to have a little bit more control on it. You know, obviously, drain life on Arthas would have done more damage there because he was below health. Um, but I just like having more control, and I just love the idea of Bound by Shadow better. But that is a really good option. Um, I would have to say, just being able to, if you know the person is that much lower, uh, you know, if you're just going to be draining more health out of them, doing more damage, so they're just going to die quicker. And if you combine, if you did combine it together with um, health funnel, that would have a really good, um, really good synergy. You know, if you took health funnel and then at seven you took Devour the Frail, um, that means that if you did kill them, you know, you're just going to be doing that much more damage. Um, so, and then if you did kill them, that means that you're going to get, you know, um, your ability back much faster. So there is a good synergy between those two abilities. Um, the next one is Curse of Exhaustion. Uh, upon expiration, corruption slows enemy movement speed by 50% for two seconds. That I do like also. Um, you know uh, me, I love slows. Um, slows are awesome in my book. Um, so that was a viable option uh, that I was thinking about. But I decided that I def I wanted to go with the Bound by Shadows because I, I, I just want to be able to get that cooldown a lot quicker. And then the last choice in this tier um, is Hunger for Power. Increases ability power by 15% by reducing healing received from allies by 25%. So I did... I, I could see the placements for that. Um, I could see that being very useful. Um, I can see that having a very devastating effect, um, but I didn't particularly like that compared to the other three choices in this tier, honestly. The other three choices in this tier are much stronger, I felt. Um, so it's a very strong tier, or level 7. But we're going to go with Bound by Shadows so that we can reduce that cooldown. So see, it's at 16 seconds, hit a hero, drops, hit a hero, drops. Hit a hero, drops. You could just get it. You could see how much potential you have of dropping that um, cooldown time. And then when you drop it, you'll just be able to do it again. And what are we up to? 26. We're almost there. Let's drop our ability power on it. We're going to use some life tap, get some mana back. And then the next wave, we're going to be getting some health back as soon as the next wave gets here. The next wave, suck up them, use life tap, get our mana back, use this ability. Oh, I missed. Alright, so now we're at level 10 for our first heroic picks. Um, the first heroic is Horrify. After a short delay, deal 285 damage, fear enemy heroes in the area for 2 seconds. 
Now this is the classic warlock ability. You know, the classic fear. You shoot fear and everybody runs away. Um, which is one, you know, if you're into warlocks, that, that is definitely an awesome choice. I like that. Oop, we're out of mana. Gotta heal up. Steal them. And then life tap on them, which was a bad choice. I was trying to hit Arthas, but anyway. And then we can steal these guys, just get our health back. Um, so Horrify is the one I'm going to go with. Um, I do like that. It gives you a lot more control um, on some of the fights. Definitely a you know um, a control ability if you're in a, in a team fight and stuff. You can just send people off in bad directions and they can't really do much. Because it is an area effect thing. As long as they're within that area, then they're gonna they're gonna be fine. Or they're going to be running away. The other one is Rain of Destruction. It summons um, a rain of meteors in an area for 7 seconds. Um, each meteor does 391 damage in a small area. Um, the only thing I didn't like about this is that um, you're channeled for one. Kind of like your drain life. Um... So I didn't like that people could knock you out of it, um, because you are channeled. So I didn't like that. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't like is that um, it was really just a random locations. I mean, it's a huge area uh, that the cast is, but it's random. So um, I didn't like the lack of control with it. Um, because it was just, it's a huge area for these, uh, for these, uh, meteors to land in. You know, if, I guess it was a little bit more concentrated, kind of like Hyperion, uh, and Rainer. If it was a little bit more concentrated shots, then that would be okay, but this is, a, it was actually a huge area effect, um, uh, for it. Um, and we're up, oh, we're up to 30, so that was the first one that we saw, so let's, uh, reduce the, um, time here so we can actually show it nice so I just didn't like how much of a big area it was and how much of a random uh, choice it was for it so let's see we're gonna shoot it out and you're gonna see it go out and then come back and you see Arthas actually got hit with a fair number of them uh, just because of the timing of that which was awesome um, so we're gonna go with horrify so let me show you horrify here uh, we're gonna Bring it up so you can see the area that you can summon it, summon it out, and then you're just going to go running. That's a shore horrify, so it's definitely an interrupt. You can use it to interrupt cast times, maybe like uh, Lily's uh, jugs or something like that. Um, so it interrupts those uh, those things. Or I suppose if you're fighting Gul'dan um, and he's channeling his life tap, you're going to knock him out of the life tap also. You know, just those those channelable abilities. Um, so it's a nice little interrupt. It doesn't last long, but it definitely interrupts them pretty well. So level 13 um, was a pretty good level also, I feel. We have Fell Armor. Hitting an enemy hero with Fell Flame grants a, shield, a spell shield, reducing enemy... Uh, ability damage taken by 30%. So I guess if you're on um, a fight where you're having a lot of uh, uh, mages on your on your enemy side, that could be very useful. You hit them and you're just going to be taking less damage from their spells. Harvest life. Drain life heals for 50% more health when used on a hero. So this is the one that I'm going to be trying so that... You know, let's uh, use up some abilities here. Alright. And then we're going to tap life here. And then if we can get to Arthas, <laughs> which was bad timing, it's going to be uh, healing us up for so much more. You could see a hundred and... It was almost 160 damage that I was healing per tick. Um, so it was just so much more health coming back. The other choices in the tier is Dark Bargain. Your maximum health is permanently increased by 25% um, when your death respawn time is, 
but your death respawn time is increased by 15 seconds. Now that is huge. Now early on in the game, you know, maybe when you find when you first get to this um, tier, that is a huge increase on your timer. That could be almost doubling your timer. Right? And that just seems uh, like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to be dead for 15 seconds more? Now, I know that in a real world, you don't want to be dead. You know, obviously, you want to be good enough that you're not dying in a fight. So that means that that negativity of it isn't going to take effect. But in reality, I mean, there are just going to be situations where you're going to be dead. I mean, you're just going to die. It's unavoidable. Eventually, you will die. And to just have 15 seconds additional time on your death timer, that is insane. Um, I don't really, I don't really want to have that extra time on there, so I did not like the Dark Bargain. Um, health, uh, health Stone, activate to heal for 30% of your maximum health. That is definitely, um, a nice instant heal, it's an old crap button, you know, it's a, uh, I'm about to die, I need to heal right now kind of thing. Um, so that is that was definitely a good option also but I just like how much you how much healing you can get from life from harvest life and the fact that if you use it on a heal uh, hero um, you're just gonna be draining their health to begin with anyways so I liked that one the best in that tier level 16 we have rampart health storm increases Hell fl or fell flames damage. So your fell flames damage is increased by six percent for five seconds when hitting an enemy hero. This can stack up to five times. Uh, we're going to a point where our minions are uh, gone. Well, anyways, so that was a good choice. Um, I like that option also. I mean, that was, uh, it's a good damage increase. It's only six percent. Um, but when you're talking about 6%, at least at level 20 here, of, uh, almost 500 damage, that's a good little boost. I mean, you're talking, well, I suppose it's really not that much, actually. <laughs> when you're talking, it's less than 50 damage at level 20. Um, but you can stack it up to 5 times, so if you're talking, say, 40 damage 5 times, that is a good boost there if you do stack it well. Um, why is there nobody coming out here? Oh, I don't have toggle minions on, that's why. Alright. Um, so, I didn't like that one as much. And then you have, a uh, Ravenous Affliction. Corruption deals an additional 192 damage on impact. And if the enemy is hit by all three strikes, they deal a huge amount of damage. 575 damage. So if you're lucky enough to get them all on all three of them, then that's going to be a huge amount of damage to them that you're going to do. So I liked that. And if nothing else, that's still 192 damage. So you're talking an additional 192 on 561 um, so that's uh, almost a third of the damage just right up front and then you have the damage over time and then you have darkness darkness within using after using life tap your next ability you cast has 20% additional ability damage so that's a nice choice um, I don't use life tap as much as I probably should but if you do use it then that's a good you know, that's a good boost in your in your damage ability there. But I just like this um, this upfront damage um, with your corruption uh, to have it right off. So let's see, let's give it a try here. If we can actually get Arthas to turn around and fight us, we gotta wait for some minions to come out. So just a big boost right on top. And actually, that was a huge, that was a good corruption because that would just hit a whole bunch of people all at once. Um, at level twenty, uh, we have an upgrade to your horrify increases the duration of horrify by one second, and feared enemies 
uh, become vulnerable, taking 25% more damage. So that is a nice, um, a nice little boost there. It extends this time frame by one second. So then, instead of running away for two seconds. Um, they run away for three seconds, so it gives you a little bit more control. But having the increased damage on them, 25% more damage, that's really nice. Um, the other one is an increase to the Reign of Destruction. Reign of Destruction slows enemy movement speed by 90% for half a second. Now that is, if you do take the Reign, that is a beautiful increase. Um, to have them slowed for that amount of time... Um, just means that they're potentially going to be hit. Again, I say potentially because it does matter. Um, because it is a random shot within that area. I potentially take more damage because they're just not going to be able to get out of the area of effect as efficiently as they were before. Um, so it is a nice increase. What I'm going to go with, though, is the Demonic Circle. Summon a Demonic Circle at your location. Activate to teleport to the Demonic Circle. So this is, again, and maybe why I want to take it, a very classic, classic um, Warlock ability from Warcraft. You, this is your summoning stone, basically. So I'm going to set it here. We're going to place it. There's our demonic circle, and now, when we want to, we can activate it to go back to that location. So we're going to get out here, and it is, and it's not cast time either, so boop, that's it. You're just like, boop, back there. And you can set the thing wherever you want, and it's, I mean, it is a 60 second cooldown to use the return... But it's like instantaneous. It wasn't even like, you know, you're hearthing back or something. It's just like, boop, you're there. So, I mean, once you get to 20, there's so much uses for this. I mean, you set the demonic circle in your base, and then, oh, say you're getting overrun or something like that, and then there's like, you know, you need to get back quickly, or you need to heal, or, you know, it's an old crap kind of, I'm about to die, or something like that. It's just like, all you have to do is just hit the button and you call and you call instantly back. I mean, that's phenomenal. That, I can see having a lot of uses with that. Um, so I'm just waiting for the cooldown to come off again so we can show it to you again. So here we are. We're off in the middle of the fight. Oh my god, we're getting shot. We're getting killed. Ah, uh, and whoop, we're back. And you're out. <laughs> That's like, oh my god. And then we can just lay it again. And then we have to wait another 30, you know, 60 seconds to be able to do it again. But I mean, if you have like a, oh my god, I'm about to die. Or, oh my god, they're about to kill the core. Or something, and you need to get back. It's like, there you go. You're back. That's it. Alright, so there are all of his abilities um, and his uh, talents. Um, so just to go over the talent build that I'm going to be trying in the gameplay video, which is going to be coming up next, I'm going to go with Echoed Corruption, um, which just means that um, uh, you once you hit 30 heroes with your Corruption, you're going to get that out and back effect, which means the, you're just going to be able to put out so much more damage, especially once you get that the upgraded version of it. And then we're at level uh, four. We're going to go with Consume Soul. Um, and that just allows me to be able to grab a minion and just heal up a whole bunch of damage. At level seven, we're going to be going with Bound by Shadow. So each enemy hero hit by Fell Flame reduces the cooldown of corruption by one second. The heroic ability is going to be Horrify. Um, at level 13, we're going to go with Harvest Life. So uh, during life, heals for 50% more health when used on a hero so you definitely want to try to hit heroes to drain life as you can so see we're going to use it on him just be draining 165 points of damage every second from him then at level 16 
um, we're going to be taking Ruinous Affliction. And this is the one that I was telling you about. Once you get to this level, you're going to be just doing so much more damage with your Corruption. Because every time the first hit is the extra amount of damage. And that level 21 is extra 200 damage. So much more clearing with that ability. Um, so much more damage uh, put out with that ability. Because that means every first hit... That's just not the very first hit. If they run through all three circles, 200, 200, 200. And it's just a huge amount of damage increase. So that is definitely my choice for that tier. And then I have to take Demonic Circle at level 20. Uh, just because that is the, the, oh my god, I need to get out of here moment. And it is just a classic Warlock spell. Um, I'm, I'm ecstatic to see that ability in here. I just love that they put that ability in there. Alright, um, so there is the overview. I hope I wasn't too boring and exhausted. I hope you stick through the whole thing to check him out because I think he's a really awesome hero. We're going to queue up for a quick match and uh, see how we do with him today. And that wraps up another video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And leave a comment below for any heroes you'd like to see or builds you want me to try out. I read them all. If you want to know when my new content comes out, subscribe and stalk me on social media. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the Nexus.